at least several hours before midnight. But when the sun starts going down, that's when we should stop be getting ready to go to sleep. Not stop making um, food and turning on lights and music and all this other stuff. That's when we should start slowing down and getting ready for bed. So when we fall asleep, we sleep great and we're supposed to get up when the sun get, comes up. Or even several hours before, we get away from uh, the, the man-made alarm clock and start using nature's alarm clock. The birds that are twerping two hours for, before daylight aren't there for your shoot throwing practice. They're there for, <laughs> to wake you up pleasantly. And that's what happens during, when, you, when you, you know, sleep in the right environment. You get to sleep at the right time, you wake up at the right time, the sun comes up, and the ideal time to eat your first meal is, is, is about two hours after uh, the third hour of daylight. It's the ideal time to eat your first meal if you've gotten enough sleep and gotten up at the right time. And then the ninth hour of daylight would be the next time to eat your second meal. And if you're going to eat three meals a day, eat your first one a little earlier, your second one a little later, and then your, fourth, your third one you put right in the middle. Now, if you're eating four meals a day, you're not going to be able to eat a daylight diet because it's going to go into nighttime. If you're waking up 11 o'clock in the morning, you're not going to eat a daylight diet. So you must get the proper sleep and rest. Here's the problem, and here's the confusing thing. When you live off the man-made clock, you're going to be confused and unhealthy because of all this daylight savings time or daylight sickness time or whatever we want to call it <laughs> and all this stuff. But when you look at the, what would nature's clock is, the sun and the moon, that's when you start getting uh, the right understanding of what it should be for this. I'll never tell somebody eat 7 o'clock every day or eat 7 a.m. every morning. You know why? Because in the summertime, 7 a.m., the birds are out, the sun's out, and everything's wonderful. That's a great time to eat. But 7 a.m. in the winter, it's still dark outside in many places. Understand every day has a different amount of time. You know, there are 12 hours of a day and 12 hours of a night always. That's the way it is. That's designed. But 68 minutes an hour is a man-made thing because each length of day changes and you have to determine the minutes an hour and an hour by the length, you know, of the daylight and darkness. And then you can tr find out truly what the dirt and night hour is and then you can adjust it. But just to show you another great advantage of how great uh, design is, we think about this. We think about in the winter time, the days are shorter. Well, naturally, the foods that are grown locally are heavier. And those foods we would be eating less often because the days are shorter. But since those foods are so much heavier, they would satisfy us longer. When in the summertime, we have more hours to eat because there's more hours of daylight. But the foods that are out locally in the summertime are, are lighter. So it's not going to be as hot on our digestion. It won't fill us up as much, but we'll have a longer time to eat. So maybe a good plan would be like to eat three times a day in the summer and two times a day in the winter or something like that. Just giving you an idea. You want to work it on your own schedule. But that's just some ideas out there. But we have to get to sleep at the right time and wake up at the right time, you know, if we want to make this happen, you know, on a consistent basis. Then we look at where we sleep. I mean, one of the craziest things people do with their health is, you know, they, they, all the complainers out there, they say, you know, when well, they go on a plane and they go, oh, I get a headache on a plane because all this recycled air and there's no fresh air, and those same people go in their, their office buildings and their apartments and shut the windows tight and turn on the air and not have any fresh air. You need to open those windows wide when you're sleeping at nighttime and get that fresh air. You know, people say, well, it's too hot or it's too cold. Even if you have your heat on or your air conditioning on, you still need the windows open. If you have a backyard, sleep in the backyard every now and then. If you have a roof, make a nice area up there. You need fresh air. I mean, one of the greatest things you can do for your health is to go camping and sleep outside every now and then. And you'll see. Now, this is something that I, I, I never experienced growing up because, like many of you, I grew up on the East Coast. You know, until I went out west. See, when you sleep outside out west, they call it camping. When you sleep outside out east, they call it homeless. <laughs> the big difference. Uh, but up to that point in my life, I've never slept outside voluntarily, uh, you know, on the east coast. Uh, and a couple of times I drank too much and I woke up outside. But, but, but we won't talk about that. You could edit that out. Okay. Uh, but, but so I was outside once and, and I had never slept outside. Seriously, never. I never even thought of it. You know, but I was outside, you know, and I was, I remember I was with the raw family. You know, the Patinkos, the Roth family. And I, I was going to sleep, it was quite cold outside that night. It was in Portland, Oregon. And I'm like, where's, I'm, I'm thinking the whole day, there was a whole bunch of people at this house. I'm like, where in the world are all these people going to fit in this house? Where are they going to fit? The next thing I know, I see Victoria, Valia, and the whole family sleeping in the backyard. Not even in tents, and like sleeping bags. And I'm like, and they weren't even wearing clothes, like their clothes were on the side. They were like in the sleeping bags naked. I'm like, how old oh, these people are insane. They want to be eating too much raw food and stuff. But then he explained to me about fresh air and, and sleeping outside and everything else. And, and, and she has a way of convincing people to do things. I mean, she can get people to drink green juices. She's doing something right. Uh, so, so I said, all right, I'll give it a try. So, uh, so the next night, I was so excited to sleep outside. 
You know, I'll never forget, my friends were going out, I said, I can't go outside, I'm sleeping with the Batinkos. You know, and I was so excited, so I got out there, I slept outside. I had the best night of sleep that I've ever gotten in my life. It was amazing. I kind of got addicted to sleep outside, and wherever I went, I would start sleeping outside. I started traveling with Dr. Fred Vichy, and he goes, Paul, you know, you've been on the road for months, and I haven't seen you sleep inside once. I said, because it's so amazing to sleep outside, and I never did this, I guess I'm just catching up. Uh, but it was so amazing, and then I remember, I now I used to just go to a house, and I didn't even look at the house, I just looked at the yard. <laughs> you know, but, 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 and, and they looked at me like something was wrong with me, and I was like, they're like, well, we got a very small place, and I was like, you got a nice yard. Uh, I mean, I've slept on so many trampolines, you, I can't tell you, but, uh, but don't worry, I'm sleeping inside. Uh, unless you have a tent, I'll sleep outside. But anyway, uh, so uh, I was doing all this, but now I ask people before I sleep outside, because I had a problem in Reno, Nevada a couple years ago, well, quite a while ago. I, I was going outside, I, got, I had a really important lecture to do the next day, and I wanted to get a best night of sleep, so I said, I'm going to sleep outside, and I was going out there, and, and the lady of the house said, it was actually, she wrote a book called The Cure is the Cause. Her name is Rudy Bobanovich. Uh, it's a great book, The Cause is the Cure. Uh, anyway, so she's a raw food doctor, wonderful. So I was going outside, and she goes, I want to sleep out there. I go, why not? She goes, you know, it's really cold. I said, no, you don't understand. I know this great trick. If you have a sleeping bag, you get naked within the sleeping bag, and it keeps the heat inside the bag. And she gave me a sleeping bag, but she was still trying to discourage me. I said, I have to get a good night's worth of sleep, and I just don't sleep as well inside. She goes, well, we have mountain lions out there. I said, what are the odds of me going to see a mountain lion? And even if I did, it probably be more scared of me than I would be of there. You know, I took my cell phone just in case. <laughs> uh, and, and I got out there. I got a nice spot away from the house. And I remember I rolled out my sleeping bag, got off my clothes, and got in the sleeping bag, and I was ready to go to sleep. Uh, and the next thing I did was I heard something. And I looked up. I'll never forget, it was a beautiful night out. I mean, I still don't understand this. Somebody can explain this to me one day. It was snowing outside, but I still saw the stars. I was in the mountains. I don't, I don't know how that happened, but I'll never forget that. Uh, so I looked up, and the next thing you know, I saw a mountain lion sitting there looking at me. <laughs> and I'm like thinking, this isn't good. Uh, this is where the power of prayer comes in very handy. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. But the, the air was so fresh, and I was like, you know, but I wasn't getting a good night of sleep that night. And every time I looked up, it was just sitting there looking at me. And I'm thinking, doesn't this thing move? Doesn't it have to go get food or something? I hope not. <laughs> but, but, but I didn't know what to do. I certainly wasn't going to start running naked, trying to outrun this thing over the mountains. But I just stayed there, and I, and I was just, you know, I grabbed my cell phone to see if it would work, and it was actually out of range. I was like, oh, oh man. Oh my. Uh, and I was trying to be very quiet, and then the battery went out, and it made, like, the loudest sound. I don't know with those cell phones, why they do that. Didn't know. They tell everybody to shut up for a cell phone because they don't want to make noise. But when they shut it off, it makes the loudest noise. <laughs> they don't have, like, a silent shut-off switch, which they should. Uh, but uh, so I didn't know what to do, so I just stood there and I slept and I tried to close my eyes and get to sleep. I didn't get a good night's sleep that night. Uh, and anyway, to make a long story short, this is why you need to look at your area before you go and sleep anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I woke up in the morning and the sun came up and I looked closely and it actually wasn't a mountain lion, it was a garbage can with two things sticking out <laughs> that looked just like ears and had a hose in the back end of it that looked just like a tail. And I came in the next morning, I had bags under my eyes and I slept terrible and the lady said, how'd you sleep? I said, just throw your garbage out. <laughs> uh, but, but so we need to look at the area before we just go and sleep.